So in the last episode, I promised you that we're going to be able to view our data. But at the moment, we don't have the code set up yet so that we can see it in our table view. So how can we do this? Well, we first need to locate our file. And even though we don't need this data file path anymore, because we're not using it to save our plist, we can still cut it, put it into our view did load, and we're going to print the file path for our document directory under the user domain mask. But without all the appending and the first and all of that, we just want to get a path to where the data is being stored for our current app. So if we run our app right now, we'll see that file path pop up in our debug console. So let's follow the clues. We're going into user, Angela U, library, developer, instead of Xcode, which is where we found our automatically generated code. Um, instead, we're going to go into our core simulator and then we're gonna go to devices and our current simulator is 8D49 something, something, something. We're gonna go into data, containers, data, and then we're gonna go into application and the application for our current to Dewey app is 5BF something, something, something. Now inside here, instead of going into library preferences where we'll find our P list, instead, we're going to go into library and application support. Here is where you're going to find your data model dot SQLite file. And this contains our database. So whereas I've got this little icon that shows me that I've got an application that's able to open this file, you might just see something like this, which means that your operating system doesn't know how to open the file. And we can solve this easily by going to the App Store and we're going to search for SQLite. So it's SQL ITE. And here you can see a whole bunch of different applications that can help you manipulate, add, delete, um, or view your SQLite databases. And one that I quite like is Datum. And they've even got a free version, which will be more than enough for our purposes in order to view our core data. So just go ahead and download and install Datum free and you can follow along with me in the next steps to view our core data. Now, this is not the only option. There's a whole bunch of other applications and you might already even have an app that allows you to manipulate SQLite databases. If you have a preference, then just go with whatever you like. We're using it for the most basic functionality. But if you never use an application to open SQLite databases or you've never even heard of what SQLite is, then just go with the free option. So once we've got that application installed, we can simply double click on our data model.sqlite and I'm gonna use datum free to show you how it works. So you might see some of these pop-ups, upgrade now, not now. I'm gonna try it for a little while while I show you how this works. And inside here, we've got this table called Z item. And here, if you scroll to the right, you'll see one attribute called Z done and one called Z title. So if you ignore the Z, you can see that these are the names of our attributes. And done is set to zero, which is false. And title is set to save the world, which is what we added just now into our app, even though we're unable to load it up if we terminate our app. But you can see that the data is in fact being persisted. And right now, if I add a new item, let's say by Egos, and hit add item, then you see it showing up in the table view because it's being loaded up from the array. But if we have a look over here to our item table and we refresh our data, then you can see that it's also being saved and persisted in our SQLite database. So up till now, we've seen how we can create a new core data data model how we can save new items or new managed objects into the core data data model and how we can view it using a SQLite application such as Datum. In the next lesson, we're going to review some of those concepts that we've come across so far. And we're gonna talk about some of these tricky things like persistent containers and view context. And we're going to learn some of the fundamentals of core data. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.